Good morning, everyone. What a special occasion we have in front of us today. It's a pleasure to have you all here for this very important event in the calendar of the Australian Children's Laureate Foundation, and indeed, the calendar of the Australian Children's Literature Community. My name is Lindy Batchelor, and I have been involved with the Laureate Foundation for a number of years. Very soon, all of you here will be the first people in Australia to know the name of the sixth Australian Children's Laureate. We'll begin today's proceedings with acknowledgement of country by the students of the local Forest Primary School Culture Club. Let's welcome them, please. Thank you for sharing your knowledge of the land where we meet today. We'll care for this land, animals, plants and people too. We respect the land, we respect the sky and we respect each other. There's nothing quite like children to start a children's event, is there? Thank you, children, and to your teacher, Mrs McMullen, who's a very dedicated teacher librarian at the local Forest Primary School. <laughs> the Children's Laureate Foundation is administered by a small group of dedicated board members who are all here today. I would like to introduce Bruce Ellis, the chair of our board, who has a few words of welcome. Ambassador Newhouse and Mrs Newhouse, um, Mr Patrick Gorman, who can't join us just at the moment, Member for Perth, Ms Megan Mitchell, Australian National, National Children's Commissioner, Ms Jodie Griffiths-Cook, the ACT Public Advocate young, and Young People Commissioner, Dr Murray Louise Ayres, Director General of the National Library, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen and young people. My name's Bruce Ellis and I'm the Chairman of the Australian Children's Laureate Foundation. It's my very great pleasure to welcome you here today to the National Library for the announcement of the Australian Children's Laureate for 2020-21. As many of you know, the foundation was established in 2008 uh, to enrich the lives of young Australians through the power of story. And I'm very pleased to say that our new laureate has a long history of bringing this vision to life. As an organisation, we strive to promote uh, the value and importance of reading to raise the profile of books in the lives of young Australians and to champion the cause of young Australians reading through bringing the community uh, of literacy together. In 2012, the Foundation joined a growing list of countries including the UK, the US, 
Finland, Ireland, Mexico, Sweden, and our guest, the ambassador's uh, current home, the Netherlands, in appointing our first joint laureates. Since that time, we've appointed three more, and today we're very happy to be appointing our sixth and newest children's laureate. And no, I'm not going to tell you just yet who it is. <laughs> The foundation, as Lindy said, is run by a, a group of very dedicated board members. Uh, they all give their time freely. And we're very lucky to be supported by a small team of uh, assistants who help us run the organisation on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're the people we really owe for bringing today's event together. And Lindy and, and Lee, uh, thank you very much. Like any not-for-profit, we don't exist or we can't exist without the very generous support of our sponsors and donors. And in no particular order, I'd like to say thank you to the Australian Government through the Australian Council for the Arts, the Association of Independent Schools of Western Australia, the Copyright Agency Cultural Fund, the Gourlay Charitable Trust, Penguin Random House, Allen and Unwin, and we can't forget the National Library who's made this space available for us today. So thank you to all of those. Those organisations provide us with valuable financial and in-kind support, and without which we can't continue to do our work. And we're confident that our new laureate will, uh, will continue to give them every reason to continue that support. My personal journey with the foundation began about two years ago, and the ambassador was asking me before how I got involved. Um, and it was born out of a, a, a real feeling that uh, the power of story for children uh, is so important in bringing them up and in their lives. And I read to my three children um, pretty much every night I was able to until they were about 10 years old. Um, I couldn't tell you the amount of times I read Beatrix Potter, Thomas the Tank Engine, uh, and pretty much every other children's story we could think of. But I'm very confident that while they all follow different paths now and they read very differently, my son doesn't read so much, but he does read uh, through different mediums. Even Facebook and Instagram, they're reading. Um, and I, I truly believe it's provided them with a really strong foundation in life. And um, that's why I've been involved with the foundation uh, for the last couple of years. And I hope that in time, if and when they have children, that they will, will remember to read to their children as well. And I'll certainly be encouraging them. And if they don't, I'm sure Grandpa will, will step up and, and read. In 1904, Dorothea McKellar wrote her poem, My Country, telling of her love for a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, and of droughts and flooding rains. These simple yet powerful words express so much. And 116 years later, I have no doubt that more simple, powerful words from wonderful writers of this country will be used to express the sorrow and grief, the triumph over adversity, and the strength of the people who have experienced so much of the extremes that this country's had to offer over the last six months. Their words will provide a record, tell stories, provide hope and a place of respite for those who need it. They'll help to provide the inspiration for our country to regenerate, rebuild and become more resilient. We can't underestimate the power of story. We should never dismiss its healing ability and we should always encourage our young people to explore their story on their journey through life. We're blessed in this country to have such a depth of talent to choose our laureates from, and it's no easy task for us to do so. On behalf of the Foundation, I'd like to say how excited we are to, uh, to see how the next two years unfolds in the hands of our new laureate. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce, and also thanks to the ACLF board members for the time and energy that you give so willingly in your volunteer roles to support the Foundation. We would like to thank the National Library for their generosity in hosting today's laureate launch. We acknowledge and respect the significant and important work you do here. It's my pleasure to introduce the Director General of this wonderful library, Dr. Marie Louise Ayres, to add her words of welcome. Good morning, old friends and new friends in the audience, and uh, welcome to our beautiful library today. And for the kids in the audience, um, Director General is a long term, it means boss. 
I look after the library. Um, it's such a pleasure to see so many of you here for the announcement of the 6th Australian Children's Laureate, building on the legacy of those who have gone before. And as I look at the young faces here in the audience, and as I think about the little two-and-a-half-year-old face that is in my life, I'm hopeful that reading, creativity and stories um, still play. I know that they play an important role in the lives of Australians. How can it be otherwise? I spent Saturday afternoon sitting in my car with my granddaughter while she was pretending where we were going and what we were doing. It's all about stories. Here at the library, we see ourselves as keepers of Australia's stories, and it's a role that we do not take lightly. We know that the benefits of stories go far beyond literacy. The more we read, uh, and in our case here at the library, the more we also listen to stories, the more we develop really core human attributes, empathy, the ability to think about the other person's position, kindness, resilience, curiosity, confidence, imagination, problem solving and creativity, just to name a few. These are all indeed skills that I believe equip young people to navigate through the complex and sometimes scary world of today. Um, storytelling in itself is such an important healing act, as Bruce said. Um, you mentioned, of course, the particular circumstances we find ourselves in. Um, this library is already collecting from communities who have been affected by bushfires and floods, and we will collect their spoken stories when it's the right time for them. Of course, adults also need to learn and refresh these life skills too. And here at the library, we gave ourselves permission to rediscover children's literature and to unleash our inner child through our exhibition, Storytime, Australian Children's Literature, which is just one fall up from us and I encourage you all to visit today. It certainly reminds me of how beautiful, magical, transformative, hopeful, warm and sometimes heart-wrenching these little pockets of joy really are and the ways in which they can connect our present selves with our past selves. The Australian Children's Laureate plays a really important role connecting children and adults to that reading, uh, to all that reading and stories can offer us. We are delighted to have welcomed the Australian Children's Laureate Foundation and the laureates themselves on many occasions. And just last year, outgoing laureate Morris Glatzman uh, presented our annual Ray Matthew lecture to a packed audience where he just encouraged us to think really deeply about the ways in which stories don't just reflect our past, they also create our future. I know that the next laureate will be a powerful spokesperson for Australian literary culture and bring new experiences and insights into that role. So without further ado, and because I know you're all just itching to find out who will be taking off this incredibly important job, maybe the number one job in the country, I would like to introduce the National Children's Commissioner, Ms Megan Mitchell, who will make the announcement. Thank you. I love this because I lived in Canberra for many years and the magpies are vicious here. <laughs> uh, so um, someone will be getting that uh, as an award. Okay. Um, thank you uh, to the uh, Australian Children's Laureate Foundation for asking me to be part of this great event today and thank you Dr Ayres for the um, introduction and to the National Library for hosting this event. It's uh, got a great vibe, this place. I've always loved it here, so I think we're really lucky to be here. And thank you all for being part of this special occasion, which is the official announcement of the Sixth Australian Children's Laureate, but I'm going to make you wait a little while because I've got a few things to say. Um, I too would like to um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Ngunnawal people and the Ngambri people in Canberra here. And I acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution they make. And I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'm Megan and I'm the first National Children's Commissioner and it's a really great job. 
And what do I do? Well, uh, my job is to make sure children and adults know about children's rights. I do research about children's rights issues, like their safety, their health, how they're going in the education system. Um, and I also look at uh, how Australia is making decisions um, about children and young people. Um, and I tell the government what I think about that. I say, uh, you're not doing well enough for our kids in this space. Please do better. That's what I do. And that's the government here in Canberra. Okay. I work at the Australian Human Rights Commission and my work is guided by a thing called the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. This is the most signed up to uh, international treaty of any in the whole world. And I think that says something about, at least in theory, how much we value children and understand that they are both our now and our future. And, um, and it contains all the special rights that children and young people have and that we've promised to them. So really, I work for all the children and young people in Australia. I work for all those yellow people, all those people in white, all the people in red and blue, and anybody else under 18, you are the boss of me. So anything you want me to do for you, I'll have a go. Okay. So just yesterday, I launched a big report about children's rights in Australia. And it starts with lots of facts about children and young people living in Australia. And I just wanted to tell you a few of those. So first of all, there's about 5.5 million children and young people under 18 living in Australia. Now that's a lot of you, and there's power in numbers, so don't forget that. Okay, over 6% are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, and about round one in every 10 of you were born overseas. So we're a very multicultural society. About 70% of you live in major cities like this one, like Canberra around 30% in our regional spaces, and about two to 3% in remote areas. The part of the job that I like the best is I get to travel around Australia talking to children and young people. I talk to them about their lives and what matters to them. And what I also try to do is let children know about the rights that they have, and I tell them about that convention I told you about. The convention outlines a whole lot of rights um, for children, like the right to safety, the right to live free from discrimination, the right to health care, to a good education, to be cared for and have a home, and of course a really important right, the right to have a say and to express yourself. So in um, uh, 2018, I joined up with ABC Behind the News, and I know lots of young people watch it, uh, to run a kids' rights survey. And I did this just before I went to the United Nations to tell them how I thought Australia was going in terms of children's rights. So I was able to run a survey with ABC, a survey with ABC behind the news and then tell the U United Nations what kids said about their rights. And what we asked was, which um, um, rights are most true for you in your lives, which ones are most important for you, and which ones are least true for you? And so the things that kids said were most true for them um, were that they could drink clean air and drink clean water, that they can be cared for and have a home, and that they can get an education. And the things that they said was most important to them was to be safe, to be cared for and have a home, and to have a clean environment. I think that's no surprise to any of us. But when we asked which, uh, which rights they thought they didn't have or they had least, they said that they didn't think they can always have a say about things that are important to them, that they weren't always treated fairly, and that they can't get accurate information when they need it. So I wanted just to talk about that last one because that was a bit puzzling to me. So you can't get access to accurate information when you need it. Because on the one hand, we live in a digital age where we have access to vast amounts of information at the touch of a button. But this is perhaps part of the problem, don't you think? It's that we can access information at any time we want, 
but it's sometimes hard to know how true or reliable it is. Digital media has fundamentally changed the way we read and gather information, and especially for the young alpha generation in the room, uh, it's just native to you. But I'm happy to say it hasn't made printed books go away. Um, if anything, this digital age has made reading traditional old school books even more pleasurable and important. Because as we all know, reading from a printed page is really different to reading on a screen. Reading is vital to children and young people because it's the cornerstone of all education. Books teach us about the world around us. Sometimes a book can hold up a mirror to our own experiences as a child and comfort us by allowing children to see other characters whose lives and worlds are similar to their own. Mostly, however, books encourage children to experiment with new ways of seeing the world and new ways of being. When you meet characters in books like Harry Potter or the wild and energetic Joe from Little Women or even a bad-natured little dog like Pig the Pug, the act of reading is one that encourages you to experience life from a place that's different from your own. And this type of empathy that reading facilitates is really quite similar to the kind of mindset that enables the protection of human rights. Part of the process of learning about human rights is the recognition that we also have a responsibility to protect and respect the human rights of others. And reading is an imaginative way for children to perceive and experience the lives of people who are different to them. One of my favourite stories is Yertle the Turtle by Dr Zeus because it tells a really important story about respecting the rights of little people. And in many ways, it's also a metaphor for the way that adults can disempower children by failing to acknowledge their rights. As Mac the turtle says from the bottom of a pile of turtles, I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down here at the bottom, we too should have rights. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, the announcement of the next Australian Children's Laureate. This is an honour awarded to an acclaimed Australian creator of children's and youth literature who has made a significant contribution to children's literature here in Australia. And without further ado, I announce that the Australian Children's Laureate for 2020 is Ursula Dubasarski. <laughs> I'll just say a couple of things about you and then you can speak. Probably jump up to It's OK, no, no. <laughs> OK, I'll just say a couple of things and then we'll uh, let Ursula have her say. So she is a wonderfully accomplished writer for children and young people who writes children's books of all kinds for all manner of different readers. She's written picture books like... The Terrible Plop, Midnight at the Library, and Too Many Elephants in This House. She's written many fine novels for young readers like The Golden Day, The Red Shoe, Theodora's Gift, and The White Guinea Pig. And in addition to her fiction, she's produced two extremely popular works of non-fiction, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, The Word Spy and The Return of the Word Spy. So unsurprisingly, this is not the first time Ursula has won a prize for her books, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Um, she's made an enduring contribution to Australian children's literature by creating a body of work that is very unique. Her books are defined by their quirky sense of humour, their rich and beautiful use of language, and more generally, a refusal to be bound by the conventional expectations of how a children's story should go. She never talks down to her young readers, but crafts complex, sometimes mysterious and ambiguous stories that allowed readers to create many possible meanings. In short, her books are always thought provoking and beautifully written, and I can think of no one more deserving of this award than she is. Thank you. Um, and I'll also be, I'll also be pre presenting Ursula with the Laureate Magpie Award. 
<laughs> Ursula, do come up and get your magpie. Thank you. Sorry Thank you. you. <laughs> now that's all good. Over to you. I know. Oh, are you? Yes, okay. So, um, we'll just have a quick photo, and then I'll be speaking later. You need to look over there. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lindy. What a wonderful round of applause that was. <laughs> we are very grateful to you, Megan, for coming along today. As our guest speaker, you are certainly a strong advocate for children, their rights and, of course, their literacy. And we appreciate the work you do in all those areas very much indeed. It's actually quite serendipitous that Megan was the person we asked to announce Ursula's appointment today because she and Ursula were in drama classes together many years ago. <laughs> what illustrious careers you've both followed since then. We're looking forward to hearing from our new laureates soon, but first we have a couple of other congratulations for Ursula. Our patron, Noni Hazelhurst, is overseas at present, probably filming in some exotic location, and she's not able to be with us. However, thanks to the creativity of one of our partners, the Storybox Library team, we do have a message from our patron, Noni Hazelhurst, to share with you this morning. As patron of the Australian Children's Laureate Foundation, I am thrilled to welcome the incoming Australian Children's Laureate, Ursula Dubasarski. The Laureate's role is to champion reading amongst Australian young people, and Ursula's reputation as a writer of the highest calibre ensures that this message will be delivered with enormous panache. She's a tireless advocate for the importance of creativity, the power of the imagination, and for the right of children's voices to be heard. She will be an outstanding laureate, and I'm delighted to welcome her to build on all that's been achieved by her predecessors. Could you please put up your hand if you are in year two at Forest Primary School? Whoa. Could you keep your hand up if you've been practising a very special song to sing to our new laureate this morning? I think that's right. We're really looking forward to hearing you sing this fun and happy song, thanks to the Indigenous Literacy Foundation and your hard-working teachers. So come on down, you two. Your big moment's arrived. They're going to remind us.
Well, 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 what did we think of that? Yes! <laughs> they were singing that last year for Indigenous Literacy Foundation and they volunteered to sing it this morning as well. <laughs> so we do thank you very much. Year one, year last year, and now they're week two of year two, these children are, so it's very special to have them with us. We all agree, Year 2, that words certainly can change the world. It was great to watch Ursula's face while you were singing too. I could see how much she enjoyed your song, especially when you look at the words in Ursula's book, this one that she wrote a few years ago to celebrate the 50th anniversary of this National Library of Australia. The boy thought and he wondered. His head filled with words, more and more words, 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 words. So that's amazingly appropriate for this morning, Ursula, and for those children. So thank you for sharing your song about the importance of words. We know how much you like reading and writing words at school as well. I now welcome James and Arushi from Tilopia Park School, who would like to say a few words to, of congratulations to Ursula on behalf of Australian school students. The incidental music that you enjoyed when you entered the theatre this morning was from the students from Tilopia Park School a binational French-Australian school just a few blocks from here. So bonjour and merci beaucoup <laughs> for your lovely music this morning. Ursula is also a fluent French speaker and visits some of her family in France very regularly. So your presence is especially important today. Would you please make welcome James and Arushi. We are privileged to be invited to attend this memorable occasion of listening to and being introduced to the 2020 and 2021 Sixth Australian Laureate, Ursula Dubisarski, who writes many different kinds of novels which show, which show us a new perspective of people's lives different from our own. Thank you for contributing to the long history of books and stories to young people's lives and to the lives of parents and grandparents who read these stories to us and the teacher who introduced to us these books and stories from all over the world. We are privileged to have a great we, pri we are privileged to have great authors like the new laureate Ursula Debusarski who have contributed to our enjoyment of the stories. Les histoires ont été une grande partie de nos vies depuis qu'on est très petit. Les histoires sont une façon de passer un message, redire l'histoire ou juste utiliser notre imagination. Félicitations à Madame de Bosarski pour cette um, award et c'était un honneur de présenter pour cet événement. Les histoires créent une grande, des grandes mémoires, même si c'était nos parents, nos grands-parents grands ou c'était juste nous qui les lisent. Merci pour avoir nous à, notre, à votre présentation aujourd'hui. I wonder if Ursula was the only other person in the room other than all the Tilopia Park students who enjoyed that. I think there's a few other French speakers here as well. Thank you, James and Arushi. I'm sure your words will inspire our new laureate. And so many of the things that you mentioned were just what Megan had spoken about earlier as well. So thank you very much. I've had the joy of working with CL6, the code name we have called Ursula for the last nine months. <laughs> so we could keep her name a secret and keep it safe. But now we can say the word Ursula proudly and loudly. <laughs> Ursula is excited and enthusiastic for her new role as Laureate. She's hardworking, creative, widely published, deep thinking, kind and caring, 
and will bring these skills and many more during her two years as Laureate. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, please join me in welcoming our new Australian Children's Laureate, Ursula Dubasarski. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely thrilled to be standing here as the new Australian Children's Laureate. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, children, my family, my dear husband and sons and sister and brother and sister-in-law, my um, very dear friends who are here, um, colleagues, librarians, teachers, writers, um, everybody who's um, come out here today, I really appreciate it. I thank you children for that beautiful welcome to country and that really wonderful song, which has made us all feel so happy. And also thank you to the students who um, performed the beautiful calming music as we came in, particularly calming for me. And um, for James and Arushi, wherever they are, merci beaucoup for uh, ces très bon moment. So very appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really grateful to the National Library and to Dr. Ayers um, for hosting this splendid event and to Megan Mitchell, the National Children's Commissioner, for being our very honoured guest. And of course, thank you to the Australian Children's Laureate Foundation for choosing me to be the new laureate and, and for all the... Um, the help that you've given me over these past several months of, of preparation for today. And um, some extra prof profound thanks to the dauntless Lindy Chamberlain. Thank you, Lindy. Um, sincere thanks also to Sue McCarricker, Kieran Sampson and Jan Richards, and the Australian Library, Associ Library and Information Association uh, for their wealth of ideas and valued support. Now, I'm wondering, are we about to look at the inspiring Laureate poster? I'm not sure if we are or not. Oh, there it is. Look at this. This is the fabulously inspiring Children's Laureate poster. This is the work of luminous illustrators uh, Toby Riddle and Andrew Joyner. <laughs> so really, huge thanks to both of them and also... Um, this, this poster was made possible by the help of the support of Penguin Random House and Alan and Unwin. And I'm especially grateful to Alan and Unwin's publisher, Anna McFarlane, um, not only for her support in this and the banner, but for so many other things. So thank you, Anna. Um, in a moment, you're going to see, when I finish speaking, you're going to see a very short video featuring uh, me and three young stars, Hugo, Zara and Bryony. And Bryony's actually in the room, sitting in the middle there, Bryony the star. Um, and this video was also made by the fabulous Storybox Library. So I just really want to thank all of them, Del, Shona, Matt and Beth, and it was wonderful working with you. Um, now, I wonder if any of you children here, it's quite possible, read the New South Wales School magazine. And that's a monthly literary magazine for school children, full of stories and poems and articles and illustrations that's um, published by the New South Wales Department of Education. And I'm sincerely grateful to June Wall um, from the Department of Education and her wondrous colleagues at the magazine, uh, who are represented today by Karen Jamieson, Cheryl Bulow, and Claire Catazuzinas. So thank you very much for that. And, um, oh, I, I think I didn't mention that as of today, did I mention that, that there's this special Children's Laureate edition of the magazine, perhaps I did say that and perhaps I didn't, um, that will be out today. I forgot to say the, the um, vital thing, so thank you for that. And I'm not sure if Winsome is in the audience, but I did want to also thank the wonderful Winsome Mullane for making me this fantastic <laughs> Laureate uh, magpie which I'm going to be carrying around the country with me, um, hopefully not jealous of my statue. Um, <laughs> now, look, some of you children may be wondering what a laureate is. In fact, a lot of people ask me, well, what is a laureate? And I just want to show you something I brought here. This is a crown of green leaves. And back in ancient Greece, so more than 2,000 years ago, a crown like this made from the leaves of a laurel tree, 
was put on the head of a person who won a really important um, sporting competition. So it was put on their head like that. And people liked it so much that they started to put it on the heads of other sorts of people, you know, poets and artists and um, musicians and philosophers and um, peacemakers. And after a while, they didn't even have to put anything on people's heads. It was just the word itself, laureate, became known as a kind of honour for people. And so for me, um, as the uh, title of Australian Children's Laureate, it's, it's uh, the word laureate. It's given to someone like me every couple of years, an Australian writer or illustrator for children. And I wanted to be a writer ever since I was six years old and now I've managed to write lots and lots and lots of books and there's absolutely nothing more I love than writing stories for children like you. So I'm really excited to, um, to have my laurel crown. And as laureate, with or without my crown, perhaps I'll only be wearing my crown today, as laureate I'll be travelling the country with my trusty friend, the laureate magpie and the beautiful puppet you saw, um, to encourage children to love reading. So put up your hand who's got some books at home on the shelf. Who's got, isn't that great? <laughs> Look at all that, wow. <laughs> Wonderful. And who's ever been given a book as a present or a prize? And who's ever been to a bookshop and bought themselves a book? Fantastic. Because um, I know we also have some wonderful booksellers here today whose presence I'm very grateful for. So absolutely to be encouraged. But in fact, despite all those books you might have at home or that you might own, I think you need more books than that <laughs> to keep on reading, right? And if you're lucky, and I hope you are, you might have a really great school library where you can go and borrow books. However, if there's, there's also another place where everyone can go and find as many books as they ever want to read for free, and that place is the public library. Now, a public library means it's open to everyone. Anyone can go in. And the magnificent National Library where we are now is a kind of public library. But I'm talking about the local library near where you live, where any of you can go in and you can join the library, get a library card with your name on it, which you can use to borrow books. And when you walk inside the library, you know you're in a special place where people really love reading. You can go to the shelves and choose whatever books you like, and take them home for free. And when you finish them, you can bring them back and borrow some more. And you can do that again and again and again. And that's how you'll find the books you really love. And once you've found them, you'll go on reading all of your life. And that's why I've chosen the laureate's slogan, as you can see here, read for your life. But why do we even want to read? Megan talked a bit about that. And read for your life, it means read for your whole life, but it can also mean read to save your life. And a dear friend of mine said to me recently that she thinks there are things inside books that you cannot find anywhere else in the world. And I think she's right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to finish with a little story I've written um, it's a brand new story, it's quite short, and it's about why I think reading is so important. And it's actually about some ants. So I'm going to need six helpers, perhaps small ones, up on stage <laughs> for me um, to be the ants while I read the story. I'll just go and get my ant bag. You can be... 
volunteers today, but we've got one more. Six ants, and you can see here we've got the chief ant with her mitre, and now we need... <coughs> Okay, now don't be anxious, ants. So um, I'm going to read the story. And when I say the first ant or the second ant or the third ant, just sort of wave whatever you've got in your hand about and stamp up and down to draw attention to that. Um, but don't worry if you forget, okay? So here we go. This story is called The March of the Ants. The ants were heading off on a very important expedition. Each ant said what they were going to bring. Chief Ant, you, sorry, Chief Ant, you come a little bit closer. That's right. Here we go. I'm bringing food, said the first ant. That's you. Wave your lunchbox. Wave your lunchbox. That's it. I'm bringing food, said the first ant. I'm bringing water, said the second ant. I'm bringing a map, said the third ant. I'm bringing tools, said the fourth ant. Excellent, excellent, said the chief ant. You can wave your mitre about, that's right. You are all excellent ants. On and on, right through the ant army, each ant said what they were going to bring, until at last it was the littlest ant's turn. I'm bringing my book, said the littlest ant. <laughs> A book, said the chief ant. A storybook. You can look a bit cross, chief ant. What good is that? <laughs> Find something else, something useful that will help our expedition. But although the littlest ant was little, she was also stubborn. She held her book tightly and she shook her head. Shake your head, little ant. That's it. I'm bringing my book, she said. The chief ant sighed. <sighs> we have no more time to talk. We must head off. Ants, everyone, forward march. I think you can do a little march now. Do a little march. That's right. Very good. The ant army set out. They marched and marched for days and nights. They were very determined and very brave. They ate the food. They drank the water. They looked at the map. They used the tools. They were excellent ants, but the journey was long. The ants became so tired, look a bit tired ants, and they were afraid. Would they ever reach their destination? Some of them became very sad. Some of them were giving up hope. Some of them thought they would stop marching altogether. Okay, little ant, you come up in front of all the little ants and sit down. That's it. Sit down and start reading your book. Open the book up and pretend, well, you know, you can really read. <laughs> One night, when the stars were bright, the littlest ant brought out her book. She opened it up and began to read out loud. She had a soft, small voice, but slowly, one by one, 
all the ants in the Aunt Amy army gathered around her, gather around her, listening very carefully to the story. They listened all night long. Finally, just as the sun was rising, the littlest ant came to the last page and closed the book. Is that the end of the story, said the chief ant, dismayed. The best stories never end, said the littlest ant. They keep on going inside you. And she was right. After listening to the story, strangely, mysteriously, all the ants in the ant army felt brave again. They felt strong again. They felt they could keep going. And they did. They kept going. Up you get ants, marching onwards. And perhaps they are still going. And every night, the littlest ant reads to them from her storybook. And every morning, the ants set out with hope in their hearts. Big clap for the ants. Thank them all very much. And that's it from me. I'm going to sit down now and... Um, What a busy and exciting year Ursula has ahead of her, as do the young readers of Australia and the Laureate team. Finally, this morning, we have a sneak preview a film about Ursula that will be part of the new Australian Children's Laureate series from Storybox Library. There is surely no better place to preview this than at the National Library of Australia. I'm Ursula Dubasarsky and I've been writing books for over 30 years. I've written over 60 books now. Um, that sounds like a lot of books. And some of them are quite short and some of them are a bit longer and some of them have pictures and some of them don't have any pictures and lots of them are sort of made up stories and some of them are stories with a lot of facts in, non-fiction books, so all kinds of books for all different ages of children. When I first got the call that I was going to be the laureate for 220, I was, I was actually visiting my dad and I answered the phone and I was just shocked, shocked and awed, um, nervous, excited, wondering what's it going to be like. And I still feel all of that. But most of all, I just feel really, really lucky. My role as laureate is to travel all over the country and even overseas and everywhere I go to talk to people about the enchantment of reading, the wonder, the excitement, the power and the importance of reading. And I couldn't think of anything I'd rather talk to people about. In my next two years as the Australian Children's Laureate, my main project is to get as many children as possible to join their local library, actually join up and get their own library card. I think that to create a generation of readers, you need access to a lot of books, more books than any one family or even school can provide. And in the local library, children can visit regularly for free. They can look for books. They can experiment. They can find books they like, books they don't like. They can form their own taste, develop their own agency over their own reading. And I think that's how you make a reader with access to a lot of books. So my intention is wherever I go to make a short, inspiring call to children, parents, teachers, everyone. Go in and get the children to join the local library. Even in places where a library building may be hard to find, there are things such as the Outback Letterbox Library where a library will travel to you 
and the children can join and get their own card and pick their own books. And the more children that have actually joined their local library and they've got their own library card, the more people will start to realise how important libraries are for children. I know what the one big message was, though. What was it, Ursula? Join the library! <laughs> <laughs> it was that. I remember that very well. Where are you, Bryony? At the star of the film, just here in the centre. Did you love seeing yourself on that big screen? <laughs> Thank you. That was very special that you were there. I just love the way you looked at Ursula during that film as she was reading the books with you. I'd like to thank all of you very much for taking time out of your busy professional and personal lives to join us today. You may have seen and heard some magpies in the room this morning. So it, the magpie was described as vicious earlier. <laughs> we tend to think of it more as melodious and inquisitive. <laughs> It's the symbol of our laureate program, and I feel sure that Ursula plans to spread her wings like a magpie, inspiring young people around Australia to read for life. We'd also especially like to thank you. We couldn't thank you earlier, um, Anna, Ursula did, but we didn't want to let those people in the room who are clever enough to figure out who the publisher of the new laureate is, who you might be, but to thank you, Anna McFarlane, for the effort you've put into becoming the laureate's publisher again this time. We really appreciate your time and effort with that job. And also this beautiful calendar that you saw up on the screen, but this is what it looks like, and the schools will all be taking one of these home today. This is Toby's side. Uh, this is Andrew's side, and this is Toby. Toby Riddle, are you in the audience today? Where is he? Oh, he's not in your front seat down here, Toby. He's standing. But give every... Here's Toby Riddle himself. <laughs> and in 2021, the children of Australia will be having a wonderful time trying to solve some of these words by puzzles of Ursula's from her book and doing lots of reading for their life along the way. We appreciate also the presence and support of so many children's literature organisations here today. We were going to attempt to name you, but we're very grateful to so many of you for coming along and sharing this very special moment. And a final thanks to the dedicated teachers and teacher librarians. This is week two of a new school year. So we're very grateful to the six local schools who've come along today to share this experience with us. We would like the students and the teachers to go out first with Ursula and you'll be given a bag of mementos on your way out from the National Library, Alan and Unwin, Alia and the Laureate Foundation, if you collect those on the way out. And the, the grown-ups, would you just wait for a few minutes and we're going upstairs to have some refreshments and conversation together. Thank you all for coming.